Hi guys, can you hear me now? Are you receiving me? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, <laughs> I think we fixed the issue. Uh, so yes, bizarre. Um, we have voice, we have guitar, but we have no voice. Guys, let me know if you can hear the dialogue now. Uh, as per usual, set of issues, you know how it works. Uh, if you can hear my voice, if you can hear my voice, let me know. Hooray! Magic. Yes, came all of the comments. Hey guys, it's Monday. My name's Nick Jennison. Thank you so much for uh, coming along, joining our stream, uh, putting up with me, uh, screaming silently into the void for about 90 seconds, which was quite something. I was actually, you know what it is, can I tell you, because uh, you guys couldn't hear it, so... I could take this opportunity to make myself look cooler than I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I was actually saying when uh, the voice was off. What I was saying was, hi guys, welcome back to the controlled environment of my little studio where there probably won't be any technical problems. A closed mouth gathers no feet. Hi, my name is Nick Jennings from the Guitar Interactive GI+. Plus. It's Monday evening. We're here to do the thing that we do on Monday evenings, which is hang out and talk about the guitar. Today, we are continuing our voyage into the wonderful world of hybrid picking. We did a little bit on that last week, I guess. A lot of that last week. But uh, <laughs> we're going to delve into it a little bit more. Now, last week was uh, very much like a shred-tastic session where we really got off in the deep end with all of the fast, flashy stuff. Today, we're going to spend a little more time on the expressive aspects of hybrid picking and also talk about some strategies you can use to develop your hybrid picking. So if that's something you're interested in doing, which you should be, if you're one of our regular streamers, you'll know how great it was off the back of last week's Shredorama down in Romford. Um, then, yeah, the, today is the day we're going to discover how to do it. So listen, uh, a couple of things, a little bit of housekeeping before we get going, some things that you can do if you're enjoying these streams, getting some use out of the things we're doing here. A couple of ways you can help us keep the lights on, you can help keep the microphone working. Uh, apparently the microphone works now, which is good. Uh, you can do the following. You can uh, go to this URL down here, which is guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI plus, where you can go and get more killer guitar lessons just like this and like the one that I'm going to show you in just a moment, because I've picked out a cool little lesson for you to take a look at. There will be a link down below for that one. Also, you can give this video a thumbs up on whatever platform you're watching on. You can share it with your guitar playing friends. We're going to get this out to as many guitar players as we possibly can. You can also consider signing up to our mailing list. We'll give you details on how to do that a little bit later on. Uh, it is the place to go to get all things Guitar Interactive. We can let you know uh, when we're about to go live. We can let you know when we're dropping new magazines, when there's cool new features for you, uh, all that sort of stuff. I'll tell you all about that another time. Uh, also, one of the best ways that you can help this stream is with your comments and to that end what we can do is uh we're going to be answering your questions a little bit later on you can drop your comments down below if you have a question i'll answer them a little bit later on now last week we didn't get much of a time to do a QA, Q &A, so we're going to be doing a slightly extended one this week i'll try and get there a bit earlier so if you have questions let me know we'll be answering them as we go on before we do though i want to take a quick minute and show you this this is a lesson that i've put plucked out of the GI Plus database. Uh, this right here is part of Tom Quayle's Modern Guitar course. Now, Modern Guitar is a huge, uh, expansive course that Tom put together a good few years ago for Guitar Interactive. All of these lessons are now available exclusively as part of your GI Plus membership. This is one of them, and this is a lesson on hybrid picking and legato, combining the two for a very cool Greg Howe-inspired technique. I'm going to play you a minute of this just so you can see what you're getting. When we come back, we'll talk more. And one of my favourite players is Greg Howe, and he's got loads of techniques that are very unique to him, kind of signature ideas, and I thought I'd share one of those with you today that's really useful to, to, for developing uh, more kind of, or developing the technique in a musical way, so you can use this technique in a very kind of interesting, creative and musical manner, okay? And it involves a couple of different things. It involves some hybrid picking, and it involves what he calls hammer-on from nowhere as well, or hammer-ons from nowhere, I should say. The technique's really cool. Let me show it to you first, then I'll break it down for you and show you how you can use it in kind of different musical contexts and over different chords. And it's great because you can use it in a kind of chordal context or in a soloing context, and I'll show you both things, okay? So, here's the technique as a kind of raw basic idea based around the key of G. Sounds like this. One more time. Rare glim 
glimpse of Tom Quayle playing Paul Reed Smith, but uh, that's another story. We'll talk more about that another time, I guess, because we're going to talk about Paul Reed Smith in a moment. But that's an example of one of Tom's lessons. There are literally thousands of hours of lessons available for you in GI Plus. You can go to the link down below. You can subscribe today. Uh, it's worth your time. Believe me, we've had loads and loads of great reports from you guys uh, on how much you see getting out of the GI Plus thing, and it warms my heart. We're also adding new stuff uh, on the regular. I've got loads of great stuff for you coming this year. Before we do that, before we talk about that stuff, let's just turn our attention to the stream. Let's see how everyone's getting on, because we've got our regular little community of streamers who... I just love hanging out with, right? It would be a very, very lonely experience if you guys weren't here. It would just be me shouting into the void, but with the sound on. So let's tune in. Uh, let's check. What am I trying to say? Let's check with the comments, but let's see how everybody's getting on. Sorry, I'm a little bit dazed today because I went to the uh, Birmingham Guitar Show yesterday, set off far too early and arrived home far too late. And I'm paying the price today. I feel really quite tired and spaced out, but happy to be here. So Marcin was first through the door. Uh, says, hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Hope you're all well. Hey, man, it's good to see you. Marcin, First through the door, as per usual, little uh, contest we have between Marcin and PJ that Marcin wins every time uh, as to who can be the first one to attend our little stream. Timothy Appling, who I keep calling Timothy Appalling, uh, is in the house. Good afternoon, Nick. Fellow jammers, great to see you. Sacred Godslayer is here. Sacred Godslayer, I got your message on Instagram. Uh, I'm looking into that, so we'll talk more. Uh, but yes, I did get your message looking into that. Uh, just checking the earth. You're already in and the earth is still spinning. Uh, for sure. There we go. See you later. Uh, Kim is in the house. Dave David Yates is in the house. Uh, hello, Nick. Hello, guys. Uh, Kim's in early at 7.17. Wow, we're getting all the first, like, all of the early birds in, uh, like, over an hour early, which is crazy. I love to see it. Uh, who else do we have through the house? Uh, let's see. Uh, PJ is here. Uh, says, hi, Nick. Uh, hi, guys, Nick. Just about managing to get a signal in my tent while camping in the lakes so and no guitar tonight. Yeah, you know, guitar and campsites, they go hand in hand, but normally it's like a kumbaya kind of thing. So, you know, I kind of get it if you're not doing the shred thing in your tent tonight. Have fun, though. It sounds like a lovely experience. Uh, hopefully the weather is better for you than it is for me. It's freezing cold here in Newcastle. It's crazy. Uh, Larry Warren is in the house. Uh, hey, everybody. Hope all is well. Uh... It's all is very well, Larry. Very, very well indeed. Uh, Peter Gard uh, Gardelli, whose name I almost mispronounced there, says, Oh, hello. Hi, Peter. How you doing? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Falcon is just here. Uh, got my visually tasteless yet super versatile Mockingbird ST for tonight. Now, okay, for you guys who don't know, uh, Mockingbird's BC Rich guitar, and I always associate it as the other slash guitar. So, obviously, we think about Slash with the Max Les Paul um, and, you know, other Les Pauls too, but I always think about the Mockingbird as the other Slash guitar. It's a very cool guitar. I don't think it's visually tasteless at all. In fact, I think out of all of the BC Rich models, the Mockingbird is the one that I would probably say is not tasteless. They've got some unusual designs, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, the Mockingbirds are cool. I like Mockingbirds an awful lot. Uh, Mark Crandall is in the house. Uh, says, hey Nick, hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. I'm doing great, man. It's good of you, good of you to join us. Uh, who else is in? Uh, let's see, there's lots of talk about Paul Reed Smith um, going on here because uh, Marcin has been playing a Modern Eagle V uh, over the weekend. Unfortunately, he didn't get to keep it. Unreal guitar. I got to play one of those... Um, little while back i agree unbelievable guitar but they are big dollar none of my prs are that expensive they're pretty expensive but they're not that expensive however you're thinking about going on the prs train you should do it they're great um obviously you know financial solvency um depending so who else do we have kim's absolutely right says uh, i'm not i'm sure one of them will find a way into your collection before too long they're not cheap but as you say they're worth the money they are worth the money uh who else do we have who else do we have um keith mof is here mark mcnish is here uh secret godslayer has picked up an sss strat this week very happy no call tap and give you that percussive tone only a strap with single calls i agree right we're on the single call train tonight i'm surprised to hear that knowing that you are a man of uh all heavy things but i'm chuffed that you grabbed yourself a strat strats are great we love strats and surprisingly good for metal too uh who else do we have cow cat is here uh, hi boys my uh my cheap EVH survived twice the problem of gravity. I wonder how those uh, big dollar guitars do. Well, let me tell you, right? These guitars have hit the deck a good few times. I just kind of wish I was playing my Black McCartney now because there's a ring on that black guitar where I dropped it face down. I, I broke a string on stage 
um, dropped it face down by accident. I went to put it in a stand and it fell out of my hand. And what did it land on? But my brand new that day Strymon timeline. Brilliant. So brand new pedal meets expensive guitar. They're both fine. Uh, but it's just meant I had to keep it, I guess. So yeah, big like ring indentation on that guitar. That's where I came from. My guitars, I don't treat them kindly. I try my best. Crank and Tom is in. Uh, who else is in the house? Rory Lisbon is in here. Uh, Blue Sumlin is in. Steve McD is in. Kevin is in. Hello, big smiley face. Hi, Kevin. Great to see you. I think Kevin is a first time viewer, first time commenter, if I'm not mistaken. Is it just you or is there no sound? There is no sound. That was me. I messed that up. We got guitar. We got mic. All that sort of thing uh who else is in d mac is in nina is watching from downstairs hey baby how you doing she's letting me know that the microphone is working uh, mark mcnish says uh that sounds cool hey good pleased to hear it man uh guitar sounds pretty sick i'm using a new amp um this week so i'll tell you about that a bit later on as we go so i'm interested to know what you guys think about the tone as we go um we got some cool hybrid picking ideas coming on too uh rory lisbon saying mr freeze ufo with Vinny is a great hybrid picking intro riff i've been playing really cool it's a great track very cool track uh who wants to be have mike Zedoff is going through uh, a winter storm with freezing ice and rain in michigan Ugh, gross that sucks i'm sorry to hear that because that sounds really really grim so i don't feel quite so bad about being so cold up in the northeast of england um i don't know why it's so cold i think anytime i travel south i'm just immediately aware of uh how cold i am i don't know it's one of those things so anyway listen Let's get down to it. We're going to begin uh, taking a look at some hybrid picking. That is, of course, today's topic. I want to take a quick minute and ask you guys a quick question, right? So with your hybrid picking, uh, we discussed this a little bit last week. Those of you who were with us last week, did you spend any time playing with hybrid picking this week let me know in the comments right let me know over the last week have you spent any time with your hybrid picking did you practice it did you play any solos with hybrid picking and if you did if you were using hybrid picking this last week let me know what conclusions you reached now last week we discussed some basic principles with hybrid picking where you might deploy it how you might use it to play some cool licks just want to take a minute and remind you of the technique so for those of you who maybe missed last week hybrid picking real simple approach with a very very complicated name it is the combination of pick and fingers now i'm using a uh, quite a chirpy pick today i'm going to grab two picks so we can compare the difference so we have a purple pick without much chirp we have kind of a brown red pick with uh, quite a lot of chirp let me just show you the difference between the two here is the purple pick let's go to hand cam so a uh, purple pick without much chirp you'll hear this <laughs> Here's a brown pick with lots of chirp. So there is a bit of a difference here. I'm going to deliberately use the brown pick for what we're doing today, uh, but I will grab the purple pick at times, I think. We got some interesting comments though. So some of you guys are using it for some interval reaching. Um, which is very cool, right? Pleased to hear that. Some of you are using it for some convenience, which is very interesting. Some of you have done very well with it. Some of you struggle with it. That's okay. We're going to discuss some exercises today that you might use to develop your hybrid pecking. Uh, let's just see what we've got going on. So Larry Warren says, yes, needs more work. Uh, Marcin says, I jammed with it, uh, jammed using it. Help me get that wide interval licks to make my chops sound more interesting. Killer, pleased to hear it. Uh, sweet channel of mine is a damn sight easy with hybrid pecking. It sure is, right? It really, really is. Now, this is the question of reliability versus um, authenticity. So if you want to play that riff, I won't play that riff for fear of copyright strikes um, because they're very litigious. And if we manage to get a copyright strike and eruption, then, um, <laughs> you know, we who knows on Sweet Child. Um, so for maximum authenticity and chirp and all that kind of clank that you get with Slash's stuff, you need to pick pretty hard to make that work. He's really digging in uh, when he's playing this stuff. I found this out when I had to do the Victory um, sound like videos uh, recently, and one of them was Guns N' Roses. The hardest tone to get right out of the bunch, I did eight of them, the hardest one to get right was Slash, far and away. Uh, and it came down to the fact that A, I don't own a Les Paul, and B, uh, I just... It turns out the secret sauce was digging in really hard. So hybrid picking is a great way to play that stuff very reliably, right? You're not going to miss any notes. You can jump around the stage. It's killer. But for maximum authenticity, we, we got to pick it. However, this is a principle we can apply to uh, a lot of our guitar playing life. So we're going to get a shot of that comment. I'll come back to that. Um, 
if we're playing stuff that yes we'd like to pick but we have to play in the heat of battle sometimes hybrid picking is a great solution to make that work so if i'm playing something like this for example where i need to play that might do turn the delay off because that's annoying so that is something that i would probably pick where i in the studio ah. take a bit of practice i guess but live i would use hybrid picking i'd play this because man just so much easier way easier way more convenient so convenience is a great excuse for playing with hybrid picking we're going to talk some more about the dynamic elements too because that's really interesting uh we've got some of the cool comments coming in so uh sacred god slayer says practice it my struggle remains silencing the string well let's get on that right i'm going to start that up we're going to answer that comment as we go keith mof says yes struggles don't worry we're going to address that as we go on uh jimmy my friend jimmy said try practicing some of the band songs with hybrid picking very effective on some songs it can lend a really cool um textural elements thing so if you're playing some riffs for example uh let's say we're talking about like band songs for example let's say you have a riff um i'm gonna play a blitzkrieg track um where, where i wouldn't really use hybrid picking but let's say we had a riff that went like this <laughs> right if i play that in let's say a verse i may play it with hybrid picking to make it sound a little bit softer a little less attacky <laughs> And then it's time to dig in. So it can be a cool textual thing, but another thing that I've noticed is for me personally, if I'm singing, it really helps me to stay kind of on point when I'm playing, you know, kind of like riffs that cross strings and stuff. I feel like hybrid picking is a really great way for me to get that. So that's really interesting. Uh, always practice hybrid. Uh, helps to substitute uh, and avoid alternate picking. Yeah, I'm totally with you, man. Totally with you. So hybrid picking is really cool. Cracker Tom says, uh, the interval stuff was an eye opener. It was for me too. It was a big deal for me. Uh, who else do we have? Hybrid helps with dynamics, played most of uh, the week, need more time. Now we'll talk more about that because we have another week, obviously, uh, but uh, hybrid picking is dynamics is very, very cool element too so uh what else do we have a couple more interesting hybrid hard for me uh needs lots of practice don't worry we got you uh it's coming uh it always works when fast picking doesn't happen i'm totally with you right it's a great way to um kind of like fluff high i guess fluff playing fast picking if that makes any sense um kind of like uh i guess bluff it but it's also there's all these other things too which we're going to talk about so anyway listen loads of great comments uh thank you so much for your comments and thank you for taking the time to share your experience with us really really glad you guys are getting some use out of the stuff we've been doing that is killer let's talk about some ways that you can practice your hybrid picking so i'm gonna switch to the clean channel on this amp i'm actually playing through a victory super sheriff today uh but unfortunately i don't have the foot switch rigged up so i'm having to do the channel switches manually uh like that that'll do so there we go so we're on the clean channel now because drive is gonna be kind of annoying for what we're trying to do today uh instantly though if you're digging the tone we're playing today let me know because slightly different amp than usual normally it's a super crack and we're playing a super sheriff today but let me show you some ways that we can develop a hybrid picking so one of the most obvious issues that folks face when it comes to doing hybrid picking is just coordinating pick and fingers and probably the easiest way to practice this is to find some things where we can isolate the movement of pick and finger uh, without kind of any interruption and we'll get into some rhythmic stuff later on but let's try playing some stuff together so for argument's sake let's say we're going to put ourselves on something resembling a g chord right we're going to play g on the uh the fifth fret of the d string we'll play a b on the fourth fret of the g string and then on the third fret of the b string we're going to play a d note this will give us a g triad which is going to sound like this We're going to practice playing some hybrid picking using this so grab your guitars because this is something we can do together so i'm going to mute our backing track we can grab some drums that we can play along with hopefully you guys can hear that okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the bottom two notes of our chord that we set up which is a g note and a b note i'm going to play the g note with my pick 
with the B note with my middle finger from my right hand. Let's go to hand cam and I'll show you what I'm doing there. So what I've got here, I'll bring myself into the shot so you can see my fretboard too. Uh, we get this. Now I'm gonna begin just by holding a chord and playing pick middle, pick middle. I'm playing pick on the downbeat and middle on the upbeats. Let's try this together, right? Grab your guitars, if you're not doing this already, I wanna know if you can do this. So grab your guitars, let's play along. Pick, middle, pick, middle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse that. So instead of going pick, middle, we're gonna go middle, pick. So middle first, we're gonna go middle, pick, middle, pick, middle, pick. Let's try that. Let me know whether you find it easier to lead with the pick or to lead with the finger. Personally for me, I always find it easier to lead with the pick at slow speeds and then lead with the finger at high speeds. Just one of those things. We'll discover that as we go on. So let's carry on. So we have our pick, we have our middle finger. Let's try playing pick middle, but then we'll play the same thing on the next two strings. Like this, pick middle. And then we'll transition to the next two strings. Like this. Because crossing strings, with this assembly is part of the part of the challenge here. Let's go back to the original two strings. So we're on D and G string. Let's go G and B string. Sorry, B and yeah, G and B string. That's correct. G and B string. Ready? And here we go. Now, if you guys are keeping up at this point, which I think you probably are, because we're going pretty slow pretty chill. Let's try doing these two strings, then these two strings. So D and G, and then G and B. Let's try playing like this. Let's go. So we've got two notes in the G string, but that's okay. This might be a little more challenging, but it's definitely worth doing. It's okay to let the notes ring out for now. Let me know if you're still with me, right? If you're still keeping up, at this point, let me know in the comments. A lot of you guys are finding it easier to lead with the pick. Well, that's a shame, because we're gonna switch it. So let's go middle pick on the D and G strings, then middle pick on the G, uh, the G and B strings. So G, D, and then B, G in terms of strings. So it's gonna go middle pick, Middle, pick, middle, pick, middle, pick. If you guys are still good, we can move on. Shouldn't be a problem just yet. This is still comparatively simple, but if you are struggling with this at this level, that's totally okay, right? Everyone takes their first steps into this stuff at some point. So it's totally okay. It's totally okay if you're struggling at this point, right? This is probably an exercise to keep in your repertoire. But if we're good, we can keep going. So the next thing we're gonna do, let's just kill those drums for a moment. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start moving which finger, or which string rather, our middle finger is on. So we're gonna keep the D string parked, and then we're gonna move the middle finger between the G string and B string. So let's try playing the following strings. D is always pick, G will be middle and B will be middle. So let's do D, G, D, B. So we're changing which finger we're on with our middle. And stick with the middle finger for this, by the way. We'll get the third finger in in a moment. That's gonna be our exercise for now. So let's do it. It's D, G, D, B. Let's try it. Here we go. shouldn't be too too complicated but the next thing we have to do is we have to play not just with moving our middle finger 
and not just moving our pick, but also with different pick strokes, because we can't just play down strokes and middle finger notes. We also have to be able to play against up strokes. So let's try playing up, middle, up, middle. So this time we're changing the pick so it's an up stroke instead of a down stroke. It's a little more tricky, this one. Probably because we don't often play down strokes just as is, but let's try that, right? There are levels to this stuff, so we're gonna keep getting more difficult as we go. This is our technical aspect. We'll do some musical stuff in a minute. So let's do up strokes first. Up, middle, up, middle. And I'm changing which string I'm on with the middle finger. Hopefully that still feels okay. The upstrokes will feel a little strange in comparison. Up, upstrokes will feel a little bit odd, but that's okay. Now, next thing we're gonna take a look at is using three fingers. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can use three fingers with a degree of uh, independence. So we can use them to play that sort of like. Or we can use three fingers just to roll, which does feel a little bit different. Let me show you the difference, right? So here's three fingers. Notice that every digit gets its own little bit of movement. Incidentally, those of you who are a little skeptical about using thumb movement for your picking, this is actually a good time to get the thumb movement on the go, is when you're doing hybrid picking. So we can use the thumb as well as a movement of the wrist to clear the string. Probably thumb is not the easiest mechanic to get up to speed with, but we can use it for single strokes like this. Anyway, that's our independent fingers. A roll, you'll notice, has more of a rotation movement of the, of the forearm. That's a different thing. And that's something we'll look at maybe when we look at some country stuff. Change key halfway through that lick. <laughs> but you couldn't see, because it was all this hand. But anyway, listen, so, we're gonna talk about using three fingers. Let's get myself back in frame. This time we're gonna get our drums back on. Same triad, right, same triad. But this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna play D, G, B. Now that's with a little break, but the way we're gonna play it is this. Ready? Let's try it, here we go. break up the rhythmic flow of what we have been playing. Hopefully this is still good. If you guys are still with me, then we're laughing. Now, some players will never go as far as three fingers and they'll be quite happy, right? But some fingers, some guys will use four fingers and wish they had more. Either is totally fine. Don't laugh and try and play in time. So anyway, listen. Let's up the tempo just a little bit. Let's try playing. Because we've been playing pretty slow so far. Let me know if this speed is still okay. Hopefully we're still good. Now this should feel quite easy. But at this speed, let's go back to just pick and middle. Ready? Just pick and middle like this. It's a little faster now. Alternate every bar between pick and middle, and then pick middle ring. So pick middle first, two fingers, or one finger rather. Every two bars even. Here we change. Back. Three fingers. Again, this is all just developmental stuff. crazy fast tempo yet, but what you can do with this is you can take all of these exercises and you can develop them based upon uh, your personal preferences, personal strengths, personal weaknesses. If you guys are still with me, let's do a challenge, right? Let's see if we can get it up to 16th notes. So 16th notes, going to look like this. Let's try it. Ready? Three, four.
Got it? Let's go. That should be pretty good. Let's do pick middle. Just pick middle. Let's go. This should feel more difficult in a weird, weird kind of way. So I'm talking, I can't hear the drums. Uh, let's do it again, but this time let's do middle pick. Again, pretty strange. Let's do middle pick, middle pick, changing strings. So lead with the middle finger. Here we go. Now, obviously that's a little awkward. But if you're doing it at this kind of level, pretty well sorted as far as the technique of hybrid picking goes, if that makes sense. Uh, that rolling sounds like what Jerry Donahue used to do. For sure, yeah, 100%. You know, a, a lot of that kind of, um, I always say the guitar is the the chameleon of a country band. If you're playing country, the guitar kind of like steals licks from uh, like players of all sorts of instruments. So we steal like pedal steel licks. <laughs> also steal like uh, piano licks, we steal fiddle licks, we also steal um, like banjo licks. So, so, yeah, that rolling thing is like stealing banjo licks for country guitar. Now, obviously, I'm absolutely not an expert with country guitar. I, I dabble. Um, we have country guitar lessons, though. We've got loads of them, and they're really good. So anyway, listen, that is some of the right-hand aspects. But another thing we need to be able to do with our hybrid picking is we need to be able to uh, incorporate... Uh, how about a triad run for homework? Good question, right? I will, I'm going to teach you a hybrid run a little bit later on. A triad run. Why not? Let's do it because it's a lot of fun. I'll teach you a very cool triad, triad run as we go, uh, but that'll be later on, right? Because um, I'll get my thoughts together on that one. I'll teach you a very cool one because that's a very good idea. Um, so here's another one, right? So a sacred god slayer has read my mind. Uh, I need to raise my left hand fingers every note to keep clarity. Otherwise, it is a mess for sure. This is where we're going to engage the distortion because uh, when you play with gain it's okay playing clean that's fine when you play with gain uh, especially with quite a lot of gain as i am want to do like this this stuff just blurs it turns into a nonsense so what we do instead is instead of playing like this what's my, my left hand here we start to this And that's where the separation comes in. So what we're looking for here, let's talk about this, right? This is our same hybrid picking technique as before, but here all we're doing is we're lifting our left hand finger to dampen the note. Here's another little thing on dampening. Watch that my, watch what my thumb does when I play a middle finger note. Watch this. Pick, middle, ooh, pick, middle. Notice the thumb, and I guess the pick to an extent, is dampening the string that I don't want. That is something you can play with. You can absolutely toy with that, but I'm also using my middle finger to dampen the G string when I'm not playing it. Let me bring myself into shots so you can see. As soon as I go up with this D string, middle finger goes up with the G string. So it's a double muting approach. I'm lifting, but I'm also muting with the right hand finger, which has the convenience of then being on the string that I want, which is kind of nice. That's a nice little lick. I'm going to keep that. I'll come back and learn it. So anyway, I do this, by the way. If I play stuff and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool, I'll come back and learn it. So here we go. Let's talk about some right hand muting, left hand muting. We're going to play the same deal. It's going to be pick on the D string, middle finger on the G string with both hands, and let's go like this. Notice I'm no longer keeping these down. I'm lifting the finger as I go. So let's play it. Let's see what happens. Let's go. Our aim is to keep these two notes long, but separate. So what we don't want to 
as this. We want it to run right up until it's time to change. So the plane joined up, but they're separate from each other. Let's do that alternating between G string with the middle finger and B string with the middle finger. If you want to do it fast, that's how you do it. So as far as that goes, that is just something to be aware of. That's our muting technique when it comes to our hybrid picking stuff. Now, I'll show you a lick to go along with this in a minute, because um, I did promise that I would. So we'll I'll give you a lick for some homework. But next up, we're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to talk a bit about hybrid picking as a creative thing. So one of the great things about playing through a, a good feeling and good sounding gain sound is... that if the noise gate isn't on, it affords us a good deal of dynamic control in that we can play hard, we can play soft. The notes aren't just gonna become loud and quiet. Instead, they're gonna become, uh, I guess, more aggressive and then soft, if that makes any sense. So. What we may do is we may start using this as a dynamic tool. So let's go to a track that is uh, kind of like a guest calling out for some dynamics. I've got a really good one in here somewhere. Uh, it is our gospel blues. Let me just find the thing. And if I haven't got it, I'm going to drag it in. Uh, these are available or they should be available on the Guitar Interactive uh, website, all of these back tracks. You know, I don't have the gospel, so it's totally fine. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach for a good old favorite, which is the ambient ballad in E. I do like this one, right? This is our ambient ballad in E major. Uh, so we're playing in E major. What we can do with this is we can use our finger as a way to get both very quiet and very loud notes. So let's pick a phrase. Let's pick a phrase that goes like this. We're gonna play on the B string. Five, seven, and then we're gonna to slide to nine. Really easy phrase, quite simple. A track single like this. Really quite a nice sounding phrase. Let's start by playing with a pick. Right, so with a pick, we're going to get this. And if you haven't done so already, try throwing a bit of gain on for this. You don't need loads. I like loads, but you don't need loads. Let's try playing with a finger like this. Notice the difference in... Not just the volume, but also... The notes vowel. It becomes sort of an awe when we play with a finger. When we play with a pick, it becomes more of like an ah. So with a pick. With a finger. Now, next question, next challenge. I want to see if we can play really loud notes versus really soft notes. So we're going to play this phrase super, super loud using a pick then super soft using pick. Then we're going to try the same using fingers. Now, because I'm playing all the game, you won't hear a difference in actual volume, but you will hear a difference in tone. So, let's try it. Here's pick. Here's pick really loud. Same thing. I'm going to play. Here's pick really soft, if I can. Let's go back to the start of the track, so we've got some consistency. Here's pick really soft. Sounds nice. Here's fingers really loud. A little bit of grit there. Here's uh, fingers really soft. Softer again. Yeah, soft that is. It almost doesn't have an attack. It's like a violin. So that's my finger. Really, really soft. Here's pick. Pick really soft. Still has a at the start of the note. Finger really soft. Let's do another one. Let's do a phrase that goes like this. 
teach you that phrase now, and then we'll play it along with the backing track. So our phrase is going to go like this. We're going to play on fret number 14 on a high E string. We're going to pre-bend and release. Pre-bend again. And then 14 again on the high E with vibrato, right? Nice medium width, medium speed, maybe erring on the slower side. This sort of thing. I'm dying for this to be resolved, right? It's got a whole core space around that. So this... We resolve. Hooray. This phrase here... Any delay being used, Nick? Not just yet. A bit of reverb, but we can throw a delay on. It sounds great with delay, but you absolutely can. If you want to use delay, you use delay. So there's a phrase, anyway. It's pre-bend and release. Pre-bend and release. And then 12. Is it a tone? Is it a semitone? It's kind of somewhere in between the two, but that's okay. So what we get is this. Let's go back to that same position in the track. Here's a phrase. I'm going to play it with my pick. I'm going to try and play it really loud. I'm going to try and play it really soft. Difficult. Doesn't sound that great. Finger. Really soft. Beautiful. Really nice. Pick. Really hard. Finger. Really hard. Sounds like Stevie Ray. Right? Did you catch that? Let's do it again. Finger soft. Pick soft. Not that great. Finger sounds foul. Uh, pick really hard. Sounds pretty good. Pick really hard. Totally different notes, right? Sounds like it's going ew as opposed to ow. And it's really cool. Are you guys getting the same results, by the way, right? Let me know in the comments if this is working out for you, this business of using your hybrid picking as a dynamic element. But there's another thing to it too, right? It's not just the dynamic element, but the muting that comes baked into hybrid picking. This business of being able to put your finger back on the string gives you a way of controlling the note duration that we don't get with just regular picking. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go back to that track. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play using just my pick and then I'm going to play using my hybrid picking approach. I want you to pay attention to the length of some of the notes, particularly the notes that fall between the cracks. So not the big focus notes, but the little notes that are used to set up the phrases. Here's just pick. ability to take a note and do this with my right hand. Let's bring myself in shot like this. Let's play this, for example. That business of just muting the note and controlling the duration of the note and the space between them gives me so many expressive possibilities. I can also do things like this, where we played this phrase before, this. It's really hard to get those two bends to be staccato with a pick, but also have it be soft. So like, for example, this. That sounds cool with a pick, but if I try and play it soft, starts going 
in a kind of a really unpleasant way. Whereas if I play it softly with fingers like this. sounds gorgeous it's really nice right really really soft and really really uh really beautiful now this in combination with the usual stuff we use to control dynamics which is our guitar's volume and things like that it's going to give you just like endless expressive possibilities to that end let's jam right so we're in e major i'm going to throw the delay on we're going to take some passes each you can play whatever you want in the key of e major a good place to begin if you're not sure is the pentatonic scale box one on fret number nine like this. Let's try it. I'm gonna jam, I'm gonna go first. dynamics on the go so don't be afraid to reach for some notes with your finger and even palm pick and get your thumb involved if you want that's okay too but i would encourage you to maybe try and do this as hybrid as you can because combining that with some good old-fashioned pick and stuff is where the magic is let me take a pass so i might go like this So listen, guys, i see a quick moment to show you this. Uh, when we come back, we're going to answer your questions. I'm sure you have them, right? So drop your questions down below. We'll be answering your questions as we go on. Um, but before we do, right, I just want to show you this very quickly. This is a little bit of a look at Expressive Techniques Part 1. This is available as part of your GI Plus uh, subscription, where you'll learn not just about dynamics and not just about all this kind of good stuff. You also get a ton of that in the Ultimate Guide to Melody and Phrasing as well, which is just a huge course, my favorite course, right? It's the flagship course as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I would say that because I did it. Anyway, with uh, Expressive Techniques Part 1, you learn all about bends, vibrato, slides, all of the stuff that goes along with this hybrid picking approach to make you sound like a more expressive guitar player. Uh, why tell when you can show? It's this when we come back. We'll be answering your questions. Hi guys, Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. Does your playing sound like this? When really you'd like it to sound like this? Now 
Now, the difference between these two examples are not the notes that are being played, but rather the way the notes are being played. I'm sure you've heard this before. Guitar players will say to you, it's not what you play, it's how you play it. And when it comes to creating interesting, emotive, and musical sounding guitar lines, that is very much the case. And in this course, Expressive Techniques Part 1, we aim to equip you with the tools to sound more musical, more emotive, more interesting, and ultimately more expressive on the guitar. And we are going to do this by exploring the three principal left hand expressive techniques, which are slides, bends, and vibrato. I'm going to show you the mechanics of these techniques and how you can execute them cleanly, efficiently, and reliably. I'll also give you some exercises to help develop these techniques. And we're also gonna discuss some musical applications, how you might use these techniques in your own playing. We're gonna go into great depth with that stuff. And I'm also gonna give you a solo study, a piece of music I've prepared. And I'm gonna encourage you and kind of guide you through the process of applying expression to an otherwise expressionless and bare sounding piece of guitar playing. So at the end of this course, you are gonna be able to take otherwise uninteresting and fairly dry pieces of music and turn them into expressive, colorful, musical lines. And you're also gonna be able to take this and apply it to your own playing or to other people's music that maybe you're playing and you want to express in your own way. This is Expressive Techniques Part One. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive GI Plus. I hope you'll join me. I will see you in there. So that's available as part of your GI Plus membership. You guys know where you can go to get it. You can go to the URL that's currently covered by this drop your comments down below thing. This URL right here, guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI Plus. You can click the link down below in the description where you will also be taken to GI Plus where you can go and get all sorts of lessons just like that, including the Tom Quayle lesson that we showed earlier. And if you want to go straight to that lesson, hey, link is down below. So listen, uh, your comments uh, are greatly appreciated, right? We love hearing from you guys. We got some great questions. I do just quickly want to take a look at this one. Uh, this is a, uh, a comment from uh, DMAC, uh, or DMAC. I'm going to call you DMAC. Uh, why not? Um, who says, how about a triad run for homework, right? We're going to do a triad run for homework, but we're going to vote. So uh, what I want to know from you guys is, do you want a country-style triad uh, line for your homework, or do you want an Eric Johnson style triad line for your homework? You let me know, right? Do you want Eric Johnson? Do you want country, right? I'll give you whichever one you prefer. Let me know, and that's going to be the one. So vote down below, Eric Johnson or country. In the meantime, right, some questions. So first one here, Keith MOF uh, says, a lot more work required before I can think about jamming, um, using hybrid picking, ho-hum. Keith, I, I totally hear you, but I beg to differ, right? If you can do this... We're good. If you can play on one string with hybrid picking, you can jam. If you can play one note, you can jam. You're in the band. So anyway, listen, the votes are coming in. It's looking like an overwhelming win for country, but uh, there is time for Eric Johnson to get it yet. Here's another one, though. Larry Warren uh, is asking the question, says, uh, thanks for the direction. It clarifies things. Are you rolling the wrist slightly? Uh, I, let's find out. Let's discover. So, okay, uh, I want to play some lines. I'm just going to improvise, and we'll see if I am rolling the wrist. I'm going to hide myself because you can't see my wrist if I do that. So let's figure it out. Here we go. I am. Ah, now, I see what's going on here. I am when I do three strings in rapid succession, like this. There I will roll the wrist the rest of the time. I'm 
not so much. But here, if I go like this... Especially going down, especially this. So yes, I am, but mainly just on three strings in rapid succession. So if we're doing like a like a roll, like the ones we're about to do, because you guys have asked for country, then um, <laughs> why not? Let's see. Tough choices. Both as DMAC. Maybe we'll do both in the time. We've got time for one, so we'll do country, because you guys have said country. Uh, so why not? Um, here's a good question. Uh, Rory Lisbon says, find a song or riff you like that requires hybrid picking and practice that. Here's a, I'm going to put a, a corollary to this, because it's a very good point. Uh, I would say, in addition to that, find a riff or a song that you like that doesn't use hybrid picking but has string crosses and practice it using hybrid picking like this for example uh let's go close up cam let me do this <laughs> For example, who knows? Or like a friend that did Sweet Child of Mine uh, earlier on. So yeah, you can absolutely do a song that requires hybrid picking, or you can just enforce it on a song you already know, which is kind of fun. But with Rory's way, you get to learn a new song, which is kind of fun. So anyway, uh, you guys asked for country, country we shall have. Let's do one that goes a little bit like this. This is going to be an interesting one, I think. Uh, try my best. So this is one I stole from Mickey, by the way. Mickey's my friend. Let me see how quickly I can teach that for you. Let's do it again. Uh, that's good fun. Let's do it. Let's go to the close-up cam, show you what's going on. So, let me show you what's happening here. Um, quite a simple lake. It involves pick on the A string. It doesn't look simple, but it is. Pick on the A string, and then fingers, both left hand and right hand, on the G and B strings. Sorry, yeah, G and B strings. So we're not playing the D string. It's A string with pick, and then uh, with the uh, G, with the middle finger and the ring finger from the, the right hand, we're going to play double stops. The first thing we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go like this. Uh, let's go to the telly sound if I can get one. <laughs> Maybe compressor. Do I have a compressor? What's that on? Six. Just reach it. There we go. So, the way we're going to play this is we're going to slide. We're in the key of G, by the way, because all country is in G. Uh, you know, if country guitar players had the way, that would be the case. We're going to slide from 12 to 14 on the uh, A string. And then we're going to play a double stop on G12, B12, plucking with these two fingers at the same time. Got it? This is outlining the G chord, because we have the root here, third here, third here. Once we've done that, we're going to take this same shape, and we're going to slide the whole shape down two frets, but we're going to pick on the way. So we go 12, 14, double stop on 12, 14, slide to 12, double stop on 10. So we get this. And then that same double stop, we're going to slide down again to a G note like this. So it's 14 to 12, double stop on 12, slide down 14 to 12. I'll oh, say that again, sorry. 12 to 14, double stop on 12, 14 down to 12, double stop on 10, 12 down to 10. From here, we change the shape ever so slightly. We're going to change it to this. So we're going to have third finger on 10, middle finger from the left hand on G9, index finger from the left hand on G8. And what we're going to play is once we've done this, we're going to play these two notes and then the A string. So it's double stop, then A string. The same thing down a fret. Same thing down another fret. So we get this. So far we have this. Last thing we'll do here is we'll slide this down one more fret and get a double stop on five. So we get this. You are then free 
to finish this with whatever blues lick you like in the key of G. I always end up doing something like this. That's perhaps another story for another day, but this run is a great one bar country phrase that sets you up for all sorts of goodness. Now, if you want something kind of crazy to do at the end of it, maybe like a Brad Paisley thing, here's a fun thing you can do. We can play something like that. It's a really silly phrase, but all I'm doing is I'm playing three on one particular string, G string in this case, pulling off to the open string. That's middle finger on the right hand. And then pick on three, five, zero on the G string. And for good measure, I'm actually doing a hammer on from nowhere on the next string as well on five. So it's three to open, five, three, open, hammer on from nowhere on five. I'm repeating that identically on the next string. And then the next string again, and then we're done. Ooh, that didn't go well. So we may get this. Loads of fun, right? That's something fun to do. But this bit... Sounds fun. So that lick, if you missed it, you can catch this on the replay. You can rewind. You can watch that lick to your heart's content. Uh, very quickly, by the way, um, for those of you guys who are like uh, rockers at heart, uh, like Timothy Appling has just pointed out, stuff actually works pretty well in a rock context too. Like rock is kind of, it's a cousin of country. Like country, rock and roll, not that far away from each other. When you get into metal, yeah, not so much. But if you're playing like... Uh Game. There's some Richie Carlson licks from last week. stuff like that it's killer right we love a bit of a <laughs> here we go right tell john five that country uh is not metal you know i agree i totally agree right one of the interesting thing with this by the way just country and metal very quickly the relationship between country and metal is uh maybe tonally they're not maybe tonally they're not necessarily connected but rhythmically rhythmically oh yeah like they're, they're joined at the hip. Same with funk. Like, funk and metal rhythmically joined together. It's all about precision timing. Believe me. You want to challenge your timing, start playing country. Um, and then, you know, play some metal riffs. Play some funk uh, comping stuff. They're very closely related. So anyway, listen. There's some thoughts on country, metal, all that sort of stuff. There's a lick for you guys. Hopefully it's useful. Fairly impromptu. Uh, maybe we'll do the EJ one another time. But in the meantime, I'm going to bid you adieu. My name is Nick Janice from the Guitar Interactive GI+. Plus. How do you like the tone, by the way? Are you guys into the way this amp sounds? Because this is a different amp. Normally it's a super Kraken, but it's a super Sheriff today. Let me know if you dig the tone. I am going to play a little bit more, uh, and then I'm going to bid you adieu. But I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. You know what to do. Uh, if you're not subscribed to us already, uh, you yeah, hit the bell icon and hit the subscribe icon because we'll be able to let you know when we're about to go live. So, yeah, listen, love it if you can join us again next week. My name is Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive GI+. Plus. I will see you next week. Let me know your thoughts on this guitar tone as we go. If it sounds exactly the same, then it's probably me. But, uh, hey, if you're into the way it sounds, great, let me know. Uh, if you prefer the Super Kraken, let me know. My name is Nick Jennison. See you next week.
Thanks, guys. See you next week. Here's what you get in your GI Plus membership. My name is Nick Jennison, and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Or maybe Country's more your bag? Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmour, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Slash, Tosin Abbasi, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today.